shall we kick off with a little bit about what's happened with SAEF in the last year, um, but also just discussing a little bit the role of the South African Equestrian Federation? Yes, so <clears throat> thank you very much first for the invitation and for organizing all of this. I think that um, it's been a, certainly an, a baptism by fire for uh, the president <laughs> yes, and the right. new committee. Uh, we took over at a time that uh, there was actually a fair amount of controversy, a, a fair amount of uh, hangover of litigation True. and uh, all kinds of things. So my first task and that of the new executive was to settle a number of those disputes um, to, in fact, bring calmness to and more co cohesiveness and cooperation. Uh, indeed, also with uh, SASCOC, who is a key uh, stakeholder in uh, SAEF and uh, also the Department of Sports and uh, Arts and Culture. Uh, sometimes I say sports and agriculture, which is wrong. Sports, arts and culture, culture. that indeed are uh, substantive funders of SAEF and the sport. So we went about that um, in the first period. Um, our key elements remain, which is membership. Um, horse registration, the key functions of the SAEF uh, include looking after uh, the various disciplines and associate disciplines uh, to try and find a co cohesive um, constitution, uh, retain that constitution. Make everyone happy. Uh, try and keep everybody happy, not always able oh. to do that because uh, indeed also one of the functions is to oversee disputes that may occur between members and the various disciplines once they, but only after they've followed the processes from within the discipline. In other words, the, please follow the processes. Follow the processes, okay. otherwise we <laughs> get stuck and then it all um, can't be decided upon. So some of the programs that I think have come in, that are being introduced, is a much stronger uh, focus on the wealth, welfare of the equestrian athlete, and uh, uh, Sheila is clearly responsible for that. Uh, but we have, in fact, authorized through our budget processes more direct testing. Um, That's for, part of the, which is a topic we'll cover in the future, I believe, the, right, the doping. Right, and uh, the direct testing is not only of elite horses, but in fact, across the board. Okay. Um, because, and I think it's almost a warning to membership that indeed we will be seeking uh, to root out um, the the mid-level uh, doping of horses, if I could put it mm. as bluntly as that. Uh, the second element that has very strongly come out in the recent time is the safeguarding of the of the uh, athletes Wonderful. through our safeguarding policy, and we're rolling that out. Um, this is safeguarding, again, from a, a doping point of view, uh, but also safeguarding in terms of harassment. And uh, this was the US pretty much led this with safe sport. Yeah, so this okay. safe sport, it follows the SASPOC policy. Um, we, in fact, uh, have got varying degrees of this occurring. So it can be just intimidation of uh, fellow riders, uh, but, but then uh, with graduation into more serious mm. forms of safeguarding uh, that we need to follow. Um, the, I'm very keen on promoting the role of the grooms in the sport Excellent. and have been uh, in negotiation with Gauteng particularly, but uh, with the Gauteng Quest, uh, Sports Confederation to include the awarding of colors, provincial colors, not only to That's the amazing. rider, but also to the groom. And in fact, That's we'll wonderful. be testing that uh, in the upcoming interprovincial competitions. We hope that the other provinces will follow as well. Um, we are very much into driving equity. Um, so the whole question of equity amongst to, to bring up um, athletes, black athletes, okay. is a key element. However, I would defer to the disciplines and feel yeah. that in fact it's the disciplines so that discipline need to do that. Each discipline does have a transformation and development portfolio. Correct. And whereas my, my intent is actually <coughs> to uh, create employment in this arena right. under SAEF and so we'll be initiating the first training of officials, particularly focused at black officials, so That's stewardship, uh, stewards, sorry, and um, potentially judges. Uh, Where do people find more information about that, Ian, if they want to join it or nominate someone for it? So it's actually about to be released, okay, right? right? So <laughs> just sorry, there, we, the, the EXCO has just approved the budget. Uh, Wonderful. In fact, the budget does not come from membership fees. We've managed to secure Department of Sport funding for this. 
Um, I do believe the first round will be around 50 um, uh, uh, black, um, potentially engaged people, so grooms, etc., who would like to become officials. Uh, and uh, and we're hoping that the disciplines will follow and start actually doing, I think show jumping, for example, has done a great job mm. of course builders, but create equity employment Wonderful. in the arena. We are wishing to uh, standardize coaching further and have uh, mm. initiated a coaching commission. We'll be following FEI standards for that, uh, for the FEI disciplines, but I hope to in fact move forward uh, with uh, the other disciplines as well. I'm going to be, be quicker now because I, we're, otherwise we're never going to talk about vaccine. So overall, we're trying to bring more to membership. One key element that I would like to raise is uh, the whole question of unsanctioned shows, uh, which you as a dressage person would uh, mm. have as a hot topic. Um, my um, approach to that is that, um, and that of the EXCO, is that we would like to um, rather invite um, members to join the Federation at no cost. So we've made entry level no cost at the Federation level. We've mm -hmm. encouraged the disciplines to do that the same. And we're encouraging the disciplines to in fact create a environment in which those unsanctioned shows become part of the discipline rather than being outside. And I think again, the point is always coming down to welfare. So the welfare issues that occur under unsanctioned shows, there's no opportunity to escalate them or for there to be real consequences. Correct. So if a, if a show holding body decides to have an unsanctioned show, we have removed the, um, uh, what's it called, um, the yeah. discipline, uh, the disciplinary Venue. process. Yeah. Um, so in fact, we... Uh, so it would protect the members. It's in the So it's, it, it, we would like to create an environment where people choose okay. to go to a sanctioned show. We're not going to uh, enforce unsanctioned shows, mm -hmm. but we're also not going to take responsibility for unsanctioned Fair shows. Uh, and also judges can move between the two. We took all of, all of that out of the general That's regulations. Great. So, however, ultimately, let's have one federation mm -hmm. and bring all members in. Well, I think everything that you've mentioned so far um, generates a great value offering to the average equestrian. So it makes sense when you see the programs that are in place and the wonderful initiatives that are rolling out with high performance and development programs, standardizing coaching, it does make a better inclusive, more quality sport for everyone. Correct. We're, we're leading up to constitution changes. Uh, the first okay. consultation will, will occur in around the AGM. Our AGM is delayed by the fact that we did change auditors, um, okay. uh, okay. but we will have the AGM in the in the in the next uh, couple of months, okay. and then we will in fact also be consulting on uh, potential shifts in the in the constitution, and we'd ask members and uh, folks to look out for that. Okay, wonderful. Thank you.